ridiculous girly. Of course I'm Bobo. You're not. You're just a rubber puppet. Ah, don't be stupid. You're someone else with their hand up the bum of the prime minister. A tissue of lies. A Faraga fabrication. <laughs> Of course, politicians rate high on the comedian's hit list. Wait a minute, I'm not you. I've seen you on the television. The silver is the cricket. You're the Chibana. On the other hand, the high ratings of the comedy shows, with audiences in the millions, means the politicians are only too happy to be victims. After all, it's an ancient axiom that where audiences go, politicians follow. It's not right, is it? Women of the world are being denied access to most sexual favours. Vote liberal. Essentially, the politicians have discovered what the networks discovered a couple of years ago. A small group of men and women in Melbourne have helped this country rediscover its sense of humour. Coming up next, what makes Australia laugh? has rediscovered the Australian sense of humour, what is it that makes Australians laugh? Is Australia funny? So would the Canadians find Mark Mitchell as funny as I do? Or would they think we're both completely insane? <laughs> there are two groups of people in the world. The ones who think this thing I'm about to do is funny, the ones who don't. And the great majority, 95% of the people in the world don't think this is funny. I don't even know how I saw it, but I think it's hysterical. <laughs> That example is as good as any to illustrate a problem that's plagued writers and performers for generations. What is the Australian sense of humour? For Dad and Dave in the 1930s, it was broad farce. In the 60s, the Mavis Brampton show wasn't much more subtle, but it was definitely Australian. In this scene, the late Ron Fraser educates Bruce Barry into the wonders of league's club culture. I don't like it here. Oh, well, blasphemy, blasphemy. Oh, hey, I should wash out his mouth with soap. Listen here, you little fairy. <laughs> You've joined this club so you and me can get closer to one another, right? Humour works basically off recognition. People recognising something about themselves or about other people. And they say, yeah, that's right. Or, yeah, of course. And they need someone to enunciate that or to portray that. There's no better example than the comedy company's Peter Rosethorn with his advice to avoid accidents such as... Driving an embarrassing car like a Leyland P76. <laughs> Hitting your leg on the tow bar. But the real strength of the new comedy lies in the characters. In a classic routine which could have been performed by Laurel and Hardy, Colin Carpenter is talking about furniture, while Mark Mitchell is talking about the stock market. What about the sort of chairs that fold up? <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to keep a close eye on things. But if a company starts to, uh, to fold, you've got to be ready to pull out. <laughs> pull out more chairs? Yeah. yeah. Diversity, like I said. Then you'll always have other chairs to fall back on. Right. Right. What sort of chairs have you got? Well, at the moment I've got chairs in films. <laughs> yeah, because well, I've heard people say that the best thing for the film industry is bums on seats. And... Colin represented those kids at school who were always trying to be accepted by their peer group, or often victimised by their peer group, but desperately wanted to be accepted by their peer group. The guys on the fringe, you know, who sort of linger around outside everyone else going, you know, hey guys, what about, you know, I'm really tough too. You know, and while well, everyone else is here, rack off. Fast Forward's memorable characters include Janelle and Chanel. Maybe skin deep, but ugly just goes right through. <laughs> And just as memorable are the airline stewards. You know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking of pulling out. <laughs> I'm sorry? If we pull out, we'd really catch him with the pants down. And of course, there's Kylie Mole. 
If recognition is the key to comedy, then Kylie explains why so many families, especially kids, love the comedy company. And she goes, you know, all right, you a big girl. Fair dinkum, I was going to punch her. <laughs> you know, and she goes, you're going to look just like your mother? And I go, yeah, if I stick my head in the microwave. It's definitely a thing that happens where they try to exclude adults, you see. And, um, and one of the things when they said to me, you know, to try and tone the language down, that's not a good thing to do because my passport into kids liking me and thinking my character was good and relating to it was precisely because I did what they did. I actually had the secret word, you know, and they were all amazed that I knew how they spoke. When Kylie Moll first appeared, she was quite shocking. The way she spoke, the way she chewed gum and twirled around her figure, and the way she said, oh, my mum's so ugly, you would think she must have put her head in a microwave, and I just cannot imagine my parents doing it. Uh, she was saying all the horrible things that teenage girls actually think, mm. but mm. no one had ever done that before. No one had ever said, this is what's really going on right. inside a kid's head. We had to stay for tea, oh, and it was so bad. Like, she gives us this soup, and I go, what's this? And she goes, it's bean soup, and I go, I don't care what it's been, what is it? <laughs> Kylie is a classic product of the 80s, but she's also the latest in a long line of characters invented by comics to poke fun at the way we live. Now this woman had no friends, just friends of friends, and she went on to say, she said, I was the woman, I was the woman, I was the woman sitting in the first six rows that you chose that night, as you always do, to do the nude cartwheels on stage. <laughs> Paul Hogan went on to international fame with Crocodile Dundee. But his favourite, one of his most famous television characters, is Percy the Drunk. For my, you know, to do what? Don't Speak in English, boy. I, I'm speaking English. I don't understand well, it. Of course, you've grown up with jewelry, haven't you? Your mother, your mother had a jewelry shop. Not really my mother, you? only my grandmother. The chain of jewelry stores had about chain. eleven in. Vienna, Budapest, Berlin, Paris. My, my grandmother was, uh, she had a chain of used tyre outlets. My, uh, my grandma. Uh, used tyre. Used tyre outlets. Uh, used toilet outlets? Tyre, tyre, I can't. I don't know what that is. What did she have? Uh, used tyre outlet on the car. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And of course, there's Norman Gunston. You can imagine him being at home in Fast Forward or the comedy company. There's a couple of characters that have started to do Norman Gunson interviews in both those shows where they actually um, are fronting people, interviewing them and not telling them what they're going to ask them and stuff like that. So I guess if I did it, they'd say, the young people watching the program and say, oh, he's doing a Kylie Mole. <laughs> you want ashes? <laughs> what a spat prize! <laughs> you have got a holiday or a record or something like that. How many times would you say that you have been punched in the ring? <laughs> um, not too many times, although my last opponent uh, punched me low a couple of times. Oh, that must be really painful. <laughs> in a way, Kylie and Pixie are unique, maybe uniquely Australian. But so is this man. We laugh with him because he's part of our culture. Everyone knows a con dick lettuce. I mean, back in the old days, they used to make me the breakfast in bed. But this morning, I'm waiting, waiting, <laughs> waiting. Three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm still waiting, waiting, in the bed for my breakfast. But he's not come. Con seems like a one-off. But really, he's a jigsaw puzzle of taxi drivers, waiters and shopkeepers. And the inspiration came from Mark's local shopping centre. I went into the grocer's section, and the fellow came up and said, uh, hello, gentlemen, how are you today? <laughs> I said, do you have any peaches? He said, oh, yeah, beautiful peaches in today. He was eating a tomato at the time. And, and I felt it a bit hard. He said, oh, a couple of days, beautiful. Hello, gentlemen, how are you today? Me, I'm beautiful. <laughs> you notice anything? That's right, I lose weight. You can argue that Marika, Con, Colin, Kylie, Uncle Arthur and the rest belong to a tradition that gave us Gunston and Hogs. But there's still that question, why does a nation need to laugh at itself? Well, perhaps Dame Edna and the others are celebrants of a new social religion. 
comedy. Me, Father, for I have sinned. If I comedy have is a new religion, then television is the evangelical pulpit. Coming up soon, the story of a pederast who performed hair transplants on young children. But first... And few things are funnier than television itself, especially when it doesn't intend to be. Shame, boys, and shame! <laughs> After the break, the comedians crucify television.